Hedora the Smog Monster is one of the most horrific and memorable Godzilla kaiju of all time, and it's high time this spawn of sludge returned to the movie screen in a brand new film. Whether through the legendary MonsterVerse or through Toho Studios, and whether in his own standalone film or as Godzilla's adversary, Hedorah can absolutely thrive in a fresh cinematic rendering as well as he thrives on our mistakes. In celebration of Godzilla vs. Hedorah's 50th anniversary this year, here are six reasons why Hedorah deserves a cinematic comeback. Powers Hedorah is an organism unlike any other in the Godzilla universe. Before Destroya, there was the Smog Monster, a living entity composed of human waste and pollution, whose feeding on our faults caused it to grow into an existence untouchable by most things man had to offer, and even the best Godzilla had to offer too. Its immunity to conventional military weaponry, and the lackluster effect Godzilla's nuclear beam had on its body, strongly displays Hedorah's most fundamental power, his invulnerability. It is because of this invulnerability that Hedorah is able to thrive in our atmosphere with little consequence, transforming the elements that are harmful to us into a consumable fuel source for himself. When even the king of the monsters can't touch you, you know you've successfully scaled the ranks of the food chain. In addition to this, Hedorah's toxic nature is lethal to Earth life, including Godzilla, making him an utterly deadly and destructive force of anti-nature that jeopardizes our entire frail existence. His very body is corrosive, withering away everything it touches, and his expulsion of sulfuric acid mist creates such toxicity that humans are reduced to skeletons in its wake. Just not cats, though. Must be nice to be a cat. Although Hedorah does have one distinct weakness, that being dehydration, it was only through the combined efforts of Godzilla and humanity that this weakness was able to be exploited. Imagine if Godzilla didn't exist in this movie. Well, it goes without saying that it would be a pretty bleak film. Hedorah's incredible near-invincibility is only strengthened further by the alien's ability to rapidly grow and adapt. Toward the end of Godzilla vs. Hedorah, the monster is larger than Godzilla himself. With these abilities in mind, including his eye beam, which is a mild power compared to his many other gifts, Hadora would be wasted, no pun intended, if his brilliant potential was not resurrected to the movie screen. Because of these powers and the extremely rough time he gave Godzilla during their tedious battle, Hadora has proven himself a worthy enough opponent to sit among the ranks of Godzilla's other most challenging antagonists, such as King Ghidorah, Destroya, and Mechagodzilla, to name a few. Reviving a deadly mutant like Hedorah in a future Godzilla film would create exceptionally high stakes. Not merely for the King of the Monsters, but for the entire planet. One of Godzilla's greatest foes. To expound on the previous point, Hedorah has certainly earned the right to be considered one of Godzilla's deadliest adversaries. Godzilla lost an eye and a hand to the monster, and suffered much more throughout the film's course. At the end, he walks away looking exhausted and far from peak health, as if he has just fought the battle of a lifetime. It's probably because he did. With this in mind, bringing Hedorah back as the next big bad in a new movie will, as mentioned in the first point, raise the stakes. It will reassert the deadliness of excessive pollution and how not even the strongest organisms on Earth can ultimately withstand it. Hmm, maybe Godzilla is a metaphor for humanity? We think we can sustain a defiled existence because we are at the top of everything, but we just can't when all is said and done. In addition to creating a tense and terrifying movie, returning Hedorah to cinema will honor an old monster whose simple design and origins far underestimate his inherent and hideous power. Hedorah, as I see it, is just as vital a kaiju as King Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, and all the other great evils of the ages. Continued Relevance of Pollution Despite technological advancements made in the present day, pollution, excessive waste, and deforestation, among other things, are still relevant issues, and probably always will be. The environment is a living being in itself, and requires careful hands to cultivate the land and care for what needs protecting within it. Godzilla vs. Hedorah sought to condemn mankind's reckless planetary abuse back in the 1970s, but in the 21st century, our world's problems are as timeless as ever. Bringing back the smog monster would help enforce environmental issues again, 
but in an entertaining and artistic way that can be understood by a wide audience. A modern Hadora film could present the monster as a genetically engineered microorganism that began feeding and growing from pollution, as an example. Or it could re-enlist the plot of the first movie with the smog monster hailing from a dark wasteland beyond the stars. There are many intriguing ways to make such a story work, and it is always worth returning to an important concept that is still relevant today. Plausibility the most fascinating thing about Hedorah is the fact that maybe, just maybe, this creature could potentially really exist in our world. Although extraterrestrial life is not entirely proven, it is also not disproven, making for an intriguing what-if scenario that is explored in Godzilla vs. Hedorah. What if an alien one day descended on our world and began feeding on our waste, and then mutated into a monster? What if something horrific was biomanufactured, like some form of bacteria or fungus that thrived on garbage and decay? With the possibilities space exploration and genetic engineering have opened up, the stars are the limit. No pun intended, Mr. Alien Hedorah. In the Monster vs. case, a Hedorah creation would not be unusual. The legendary trilogy does love its grand sci-fi. Due to Hedorah's plausible existence, not only is the monster made more horrifying because he could actually happen, but his origins would not be too difficult to establish in any universe, especially not the monsterverse. We need to remember this monster born from our actions, a monster who, like Godzilla, has a better chance than most at actually existing. Hedorah can serve as a wake-up call. If the genetics plot is taken in any way, it can be a further testament to the immoral attitude of mere mortals as they not only abuse their home planet, but dare to create new life forms as well. A new dark entry for the series. A new Hedora film could be an excellent opportunity to create something dark, dangerous, and thought-provoking. A return to the Godzilla series roots, and also the emo phase I never actually left that started when I was seven years old. Although Godzilla has had its goofy moments through the years, at its core, it is a metaphor that should not be forgotten. In a realm of blockbuster entertainment and sci-fi films that do not ask much of the audience, a new Hedorah movie could help rejuvenate the darker aspects of this franchise. Though there are other ways and other kaiju that can achieve moral awareness and supply substantial themes, Hedorah would not be difficult to work with. And, thanks to the monster's horrific abilities and what he represents, he just might be the perfect creature for the job when it comes to reaching the audience. Honoring Bono's Dream If you have watched my video on Yoshimitsu Bono, the director for Godzilla vs. Hedora, then you are probably aware of this man's undying passion for his smog monster. Through over four decades, he attempted to return Hedora to the screen in some form or fashion, and though the kaiju received a cameo in Godzilla Final Wars, his treatment was rather dismissive, and that's me speaking lightly. In order to best honor the director who brought the most unsettling Godzilla movie to life, Hedora deserves a full, cinematic return. For all the reasons mentioned beforehand, this monster is a fit for rebooting. To fulfill Mr. Bono's dream with a dark and tasteful film starring Hedora would make for an honorary movie, and something that celebrates Bono's achievements and attempts since directing Godzilla vs. Hedorah. We have Yoshimitsu Bono to thank for the existence of the Monsterverse. Why not make him the ultimate tribute with a movie involving his favorite monster? When the dreamer dies, the dream itself does not have to perish with them. Art will resound for generations. Thank you.